Hello and thanks for joining us for another Airbrush Asylum step-by-step -step video. In this two-part video we're going to show you how we created this skeleton on a rocking chair artwork on the side of this Harley tank. This particular artwork was created just using white transparent base and black paint. Uh, we used Trident paints to create this artwork so they're a water-based paint um, and we mix them with their particular reducer so that reducer is available uh, from Trident as well and it's a lot um, better to use like you wouldn't want to be reducing down with water you just use reducer um, and it's going to make the paint flow really really nicely so the first step um, you probably noticed was that I chalked on the design so I have other videos explaining how to do this process so I haven't shown you in this one but if you're unsure just flick through a few of my other videos and it will show you how this is done so just to give you a quick explanation of how I do the transfer method what I usually do with automotive artworks especially um, Harley tanks because they're curved you obviously can't project straight onto the surface so what I do is I will um, either print the reference out from um, the computer and print it to scale or if it's a design that I've drawn myself I'll just sketch it out roughly to size if it needs resizing I'll also do that in um, something like Photoshop once I've, I'm happy with my size I will um, print it as I said once it's printed you get that reference material and you put it on a light box so that you can flip it upside down and see through the lines then you draw on the back of it so each line that you want you'll draw with a chalk pencil on the back and then you flip it back the other way fix it to your surface with a bit of masking tape and then using an HB pencil uh, just go straight over the top of that um, that sketch or printout and then that will then transfer the chalk pencil onto the surface once I've done that I will then spray um, either with a transparent base or just some sort of binder over it just to seal it in um, obviously once I'm happy with it so that way that seals it in so that when you begin airbrushing like as you can see now I'm up reasonably close and um, starting to airbrush some of that hair in there on the skeleton so if I hadn't sprayed that transparent base or that binder over the top um, it would then the air would obviously um, start to remove some of that chalk pencil all right you can also use it to freehand draw straight onto the surface as well so if you feel comfortable doing that by all means that'll um, remove that transfer step but when I'm doing an airbrush artwork like this where both sides sort of have to be very very similar that's how I usually do it I'll um, transfer it for both sides and that way I know my sizing is correct and it also makes it easier to line up the artwork and have it looking uniformed on both sides of the tank. So what I'm doing now is just mapping in my artwork so I'm doing the white underpainting so you may have already seen if you've been watching any of my other videos I do use this method quite a bit to start most of my artworks um, especially if they're on a black base so what I do is I'll mix up first my white um, this white would have been mixed with reducer uh, reasonably thin so anywhere from say 25 to 30 percent paint and the rest reducer um, and I'll reduce the air pressure down to about 15 to 20 psi um, on the airbrush that I'm using in this video it's a CMC plus micron you can see it's got the MAC valve on the front so I can actually uh, further reduce the air pressure as well so I can get even finer detail so um, once I've got the mix correct then I just virtually go in freehand and start building up my tonal variations and my tonal values using the white only so virtually as if that's the only color I'm going to use and that also is my foundation for the um, other artworks to show up sorry the other colors to show up so just carefully working in as much detail as you can get as well in this step so you've got your obviously you got your chalk pencil outline first so this is elaborating on that so 
you you know you build your artwork as accurately as you can whether it's uh, from a sketch or a reference that you've already printed out so just gradually building up the detail with the white there and also ensuring that I've got enough white as a base so that um, even though I'm just doing this artwork as a black and white artwork you still want enough there so that the uh, the other tones will show up so some of this video is filmed in real well the whole video is filmed in real time but we've sped some of it up and um, certain bits we've also kept in real time so that you can more accurately see how we create this artwork because sometimes if it's sped up too much you can lose quite a bit of detail so hopefully you find this helpful you can obviously use this method if you're doing any sort of black and white artwork so it's not limited to this particular design you can see how much I'm varying my height as well when I'm rendering so even though I'm just using white, I'm trying to be careful not to spider out unless I want that effect done deliberately, but I'm very careful about how I um, sort of render every piece of it, making sure that I get all my detail in without oversaturating an area. So I allow the air to obviously dry it as well. So you keep that air, that trigger pressed down and make sure that you use your double action technique so you know pulling back for heavier amounts of paint and only pulling back a little bit like super super fine um, for especially bits like this what I'm doing now just around the detailing of the um, fingers there on the shotgun So just take your time as well, you don't want to rush. This is probably the part that takes the longest because you've got to establish all of your detail and, and um, add it all in bit by bit. This is also a good step when um, you need to rectify something. So if you're, for whatever reason, your chalk pencil uh, outline the transfer didn't go as planned and you've already sealed over it I mean a lot of the time if it doesn't if it's not accurate enough what I'll do is I'll just get a bit of uh, water-based uh, degreaser and just wipe it off um, or even you know solvent based one will work but water base is just nice and easy that'll get rid of it and then you can retransfer and um, once you're happy then spray your binder or transparent base over it to seal it in but if you have made a mistake and you've already sealed it then use this white method to adjust areas of the design so again just working back over different areas I'm not too worried about overspray I mean I don't want to get it everywhere but um, I know this design will have a bit of a, a grungy sort of effect in the background so but I do want to still keep it as clean as possible again just carefully building up my white and white's definitely one of those colors that um, it's, it takes a bit of practice to get the right mix so each white that you use from a different paint brand will kind of perform differently so I kind of know the um, the way I like to mix my trident paint and the way I find that it best performs for myself and the air pressure that I'm using but everyone's going to be different some people will want you know a quicker build if that's the case they run their paint thicker and they usually put up with a lot more tip drying I prefer to run it thinner and then that way 
yes you've got to be a bit more careful when you're up close to the surface so that you don't spider it out or do a big blowout but I just find I would rather go over an area three or four times and um, build that paint nice and slowly it gives a smoother finish as well and then um, that way I can control all my detail I mean you can see there how you know fine those bones are on the hand and they're all getting done freehand and I'm not having to have different mixes you know I'm just using the one mix if I want it to be brighter I'll just keep coating it um, if I'm sort of happy with it uh, being a little bit more transparent obviously white's opaque so it's never going to be 100% transparent but you know if you don't want it as if you don't want as much coverage well then you can just do less coats so it gives you a lot more scope by doing that and by mixing it up quite a bit thinner so just rendering in a tiny skull there on the top of the um, rocking chair sort of on the backrest so just adding little features like that in there to make it a bit more interesting so you can see you know obviously how fine that is um, if my white wasn't mixed correctly I would probably get spattering and all sorts of trouble with with doing something that fine so so my advice would be get yourself some um, empty bottles and mix up your white with the reducer in those and make sure then you know really well you give them a good shake before you use them even um, it's even worth straining them through like a cone paper cone strainer just to make sure that they're you know there's no dried paint that's fallen in from around the the rim of the bottle which can happen you know if you start getting dried bits of paint in there it's just going to give you all sorts of dramas it'll block up your airbrush and that so I tend to take a bit more time and strain all my paint make sure it's all nice and um, thin and you know to the consistency that I like before I start painting and that way you've got um, a lot more control over it and you don't have to worry about you know when you're doing those fine areas that or is it going to spit out on me is it going to spider is it going to blow out on me so you try and eliminate as much of that as possible because you want to focus on your painting you don't want to be focusing on fixing mistakes all the time even though that's a good way to learn <laughs> they're starting to render the shotgun here probably noticed a little bit of the white there spidered out I went a bit too heavy so but it's not a problem it'll you won't even notice it by the time the artworks finished just adding a few more details on that shotgun there So if you're not confident doing all of this freehand then especially on the shotgun you can um, either cut yourself some paper templates or use um, a selection of some of the mylar templates you know I'm sure they've got um, hard, hard edges on or, and hard straight edges that you could utilize just to really get that a bit more accurate um, because yeah freehand obviously you've got to be very very careful that you don't make the shotgun wonky or if you you know if you're going to pull back too far on the trigger it'll give you a big blob of paint so if you're not confident um, by all means do that You can see I really let the paint dry and I move around quite a bit leaving the air on even though you can't hear the air on this um, because we do the voiceover but um, it gives you an idea of 
how much I move around within the artwork and that way it um, gives the paint time to dry and I get less chance of um, something spidering out. There is times when I will use the spidering out to my advantage. So if I want to, for instance, uh, create an effect, um, you know, then that might work for that particular effect depending on what I'm trying to achieve. So it can be used to your advantage, so keep that in mind as well. So just adding a bit more rendering here to the to his foot and his boot. So just keep in mind too, perspectively, you're looking kind of across, like over my shoulder. That's where the tripod was set up for this artwork. So if it does, you know, kind of distort the perspective a little bit, you know why. Um, also, you know, keep in mind it is a Harley tank. It is curved. So that could throw out a bit of this illusion, but at least you can still this this angle is just better for you to to be able to see exactly what's going on if i had it flat on it's just it's too hard to see what i'm doing because you would be kind of looking um, down the barrel of the airbrush and most of it gets covered by the airbrush so keep that in mind when you're looking at it it's it's the angle more than um it being out of perspective So just working on the the underside of the seat there of the rocking chair. Adding some texture in as well just to give it a bit of an appearance of wood grain. Airbrushing in a bit of a ground as well so that he's not just floating in mid-air. Mid and just some random bits of you know debris and rock and whatever just to break it up a little bit so it's not super smooth a lot of the time I find the airbrush is really good at rendering something smooth but the moment you want to get some texture in there you need to use other methods um, to create that for this particular thing on the ground area there with the debris it, it's fine just using the airbrush up close and um, depicting bits of rock and you know other air other bits and pieces that have been left in on the ground but if you really want to build your texture you need to start using some texture templates or like I mentioned earlier you know use the paint have it a bit thinner you can spider it out and that will build up some um, texture for you or, or you know even tearing bits of paper can do a lot of things and give you a really cool effect so just experiment with things that you've got even lying around the house. They don't necessarily have to be the Mylar templates that you can buy, but they do make life easier. <laughs> so you may be able to notice now that I've actually switched to my transparent black. So when I say transparent black, all I mean is that I'm using the regular black by Trident and I'm mixing it in with their transparent base. So you can use this with any other brand. It doesn't necessarily have to be Trident. Um, so you can, they've all, a lot of the brands all have transparent base and it works a lot better than reducer. So generally what I do is I will mix up this particular tone, which the idea of this is that it's, it doesn't have to be as dark as your solid black. I don't want it to be. I just want a tone that's a little bit, you know, darker so I can start to render it and avoid doing a, a, um, a gray. You know, I don't want to mix up grays. So I don't want to mix my white with my black to make my lighter tones. I prefer to do a white base first and then I use transparent base and I put some drops of black in there um, in this case, it's a little bit stronger, but you'll different brands again, there'll be different strengths of black 
and how quickly they will tint a transparent base. So be careful of that and practice first and you know, even do a spray out on a sample panel once you think you've got your mix right before you do it on your artwork. But in this particular case, what I do is I mix up you know, my transparent base, I add my reducer. So I thin it to the same consistency that I thin all my other paint. You know, so generally my 30% um, paint and then 70 to 80% reducer depending on whether it's you know 20% paint or 30% paint. Um, and then once I've done that, then I'll add the drops of black to that. And when I'm happy with how dark that is, I give it a good shake and then I'll use that. And what that does is the transparent base will just make it look more like a kind of like mixing up inks, if that makes sense. So um, if anyone's familiar with how black and white tattoos are done, um, similar sort of thing. They mix the, the tattooist would mix up different strengths of black. Um, so the first ratio might be only a few drops of black or one or two drops of black and then it gradually gets more and more black added into it and those tones are the your darker tones that you would then further deepen your shadows and that's exactly the same thing with airbrushing you don't need like eight or ten different washes you can pretty much get away with you know either two to four maybe different tones depending on how advanced you are with your airbrushing as well because if it's too dark to start with, it makes it a lot harder to control um, because you've got to be careful not to go too dark too quick. So with, um, with my students, I'll recommend mixing up a lighter tone and adding a few more tones rather than trying to you know, get it all done in, in one or two. So in this case for this video, I pretty much use this tone and then I'll go to my darker ones uh, very quickly. So that way... I use less tone but I've got more control over the airbrush so I'm able to do that. So just judge by your level and how confident you are and um, mix it up accordingly. And you can also pre-mix all your bottles. So have, like I said, have your um, empty bottles ready, add all your transparent base in, um, add your reducer and then count out the number of drops. So for, you know, for your first tone you might do, I don't know, three drops of black. Um, shake it up and then the next one you do six drops of black and then the next one you do eight drops of black and you know so on so and just adjust it depending you know if you if you want it lighter then um, if you've done one and you've already mixed it up get another empty bottle and you know that the first bottle you've added you know say four drops or three drops of black will then do one or two drops of black and then you'll know that that's lighter than what you wanted to start with so you can kind of gauge it like that and you'll get into a, a, a feel of what you like and what you're confident using and then that's what I would recommend so always use and mix up your paint so that it's you know the best for your ability so I, I mean I get asked all the time what's the rate what's the paint ratio that you use and what's the air pressure and um, like I keep saying, it does vary, and it also varies from artwork to artwork. However, I have set ratios that I like to use, but that's that's suited to my style of airbrushing and my level of um, my skill level with the airbrush and how many years I've been doing it. You know, that might not suit someone who's just starting out. You know, or vice versa, they might prefer it even thinner, and they have the control. So um, it's just trial and error and like I always say you know make up your um, mixes and then spray your sample panels and always check first before you go on to the artwork because um, you want to try your best to eliminate any um, errors that you may have if you try and skip a step or rush something or you know do something like that so just keep that in mind So just gradually building my tones as well because the strength, um, obviously the more you coat it, the darker it gets. It'll only ever go as dark as your mix allows it to go, but um, you can still get quite a bit of variation with, with one tone. You may also have picked up that I've switched my airbrush for this particular step. I'm using my Segola X-Tech 200. This has a 0.2 mil needle, so slightly finer than the custom Micron that you saw earlier, which runs a 0.23 mil needle. So 
I just switch between different brands for different things. So you could still do the artwork with either one of these right the way through. So just carefully building all of my detail. So obviously now I'm adding more and more detail as I go and add more tones. So the aim now is really to bring depth to the artwork. So I'll shade things more if I want them to disappear and um, you know start to get that real 3D effect. So the highlights will obviously be added later and they'll bring other areas you know into the foreground or more into the foreground so take your time rendering try and establish a light source and stick with it that will help to create a better looking overall artwork you can see how carefully I'm pulling back on that trigger as I'm up super super close and I'll, I'll go over a certain line numerous times just to get it to where I want it just keeping my movements nice and consistent and then just blending out and shading carefully so it just gives you that control by having it a nice mix with that transparent base So if this is your first time to our channel or watching one of our videos, thanks for tuning in. If you're uh, a subscriber already, we appreciate your continued support. Um, if this is your first time, we'd love to have you as part of our community, especially if um, these how-to or any sort of airbrush videos are something that you enjoy, whether you're, uh, you know, you're new to airbrushing or if you just like the hobby or you want to get into it. Um, you know, we do lots of different types of videos. This is just a step-by-step -step where we um, spend a little bit more time producing them. We also do live um, and pre-live videos. So that way we keep you up to date with what we're doing here at the shop. And if there's any sort of specials on products, then we also announce all of those uh, through those formats. We also do Insight where we focus on um, different types of airbrushing products that we either sell or that we um, are sent to review um, and then we do showcase videos where we show you different artworks that have been completed and um, yeah and we're constantly sort of adding different types of videos to keep it interesting so like I said if you haven't already feel free to hit subscribe and if you tap on that bell notification um, that will give you an update every time we post um, we're also able now to post um, you know just generic social media posts which are located in our community tab on our channel so from time to time we will let you know what's new what's coming out and we're also going to start doing some polls as well just to get some feedback from our subscribers on to what types of things you guys like so that'll be interesting and just a good way for us to keep in contact with everyone because sometimes it is difficult to write back to all of the comments but we do nevertheless appreciate all of your feedback and support so thanks to everyone that keeps watching our videos so just adding more and more detail rendering and building this design I don't want to coat everything like too much because I don't want it to become flat so I still want that you know all the work that we did to add the white in I don't want to just go over the top of everything so be careful of that too you really just want the white to remain for your highlighted sections and then we can brighten them up later as well So still moving around quite a bit with my airbrush. 
just rendering all the little bits and pieces. Deepening certain shadows. Building some of that muscle tone in the legs as well. So moving further away for the softer shadows, again up close for the detail. So adding a few of that, the timber effect in there as well. So just starting to build up those areas. See, I'm getting there nearly almost completed this step. Still got a little bit more to go, like the shotgun, the other part of the leg. But um, you can see that top section looks a lot better now. So whenever I'm up close, just keep that airbrush moving and um, pulling back less on that trigger. You want to be careful not to spider it out. Otherwise you'll have a big blob in the way and especially if you're doing the detailed stuff, that would be a nightmare to fix. Blasting out a bit there because a bit of tip drying was happening. And again, just picking it off. So obviously it was building up a bit quicker than expected. Just rendering this other leg now. Again, adding some of the muscle tone and the folds in the fabric. He's got some skin tight pants on. Building bit by bit, not going too heavy, too quick. We don't want to eliminate everything that we've done. So just shading all that as well, that whole area. Slowly getting there. As you get further into your tones, you should actually be completing them quicker because you are actually painting less of the artwork because you don't want to obviously go over the whole lot every single tone. You want to just deepen your shadows um, so that you start to create some graduated tones and gradations. More shading. Working a bit more on that wood grain.
now starting to work on the bony fingers there being extremely careful with these Again, constantly moving that airbrush. It's very rare that it'll just sit in one spot. A bit more tip drying. So just pick that off. Doesn't take much to clear it. But you'll find even the smallest little bit of paint. Like I mentioned earlier, that's why I make sure that there's no dried paint stuck in, like, or dropping into the, uh, the mix because it can affect it, you know, these tiny nozzles, they get blocked up really easily. So with this step obviously being a um, transparent black and we're working on a black background, you don't have to be as cautious with your overspray but I still like to keep it all controlled because even though it is black it's still gonna sit differently on the base color so now doing this bit freehand so keeping a steady line my height and um, my speed and everything consistent and I'm just gradually darkening it off again if you're not comfortable you can get a bit of masking tape or a freehand shield or a cut a paper template to get that edge. So if you're not confident doing a lot of this freehand, utilize templates to make your life easier. Just blending a bit of a shadow from the base there just to give that barrel a bit more of a 3D appearance. darkening in this area so it's all pretty much in shadow going back to the fingers rendering the bones Also, it's a good idea if you ever come back to an artwork, so if you go and have a lunch break or just have a, a break and then you come back, you know, either the next day or you come back an hour later, whatever it may be, it's always a good idea to start in an area which is not as crucial. So find an area that's heavily shadowed or, you know, even a spot where you can easily fix something just to get your skill level back up there. So, you know, for, for instance, this piece, I wouldn't jump straight back in and, and render the fingers. If I had a bit of a break, I'd, I'd come back in and I'd render, you know, in the wood grain area or, or somewhere heavily shadowed, you know, in the underneath um, or on the side of his leg there. So just areas where you know if you do make a mistake, you can easily fix it, whereas on the fingers or... In the crucial areas you want to make sure that you've had a bit of a warm-up before you tackle them the other option obviously is to have a, a um, you know a sketch pad or a couple of bits of paper or something nearby and, and you can just have a bit of a warm-up that way so whatever works best for you so just carefully rendering more of this shotgun you can see I've, I'm just coming back in now, deepening some of those shadows, pulling out some more detail.
So carefully moving away a bit from the surface now, a bit further away, getting a bit more distance just to render certain areas. Adding a bit more shadow there to his arm. Working on the other arm and the armrest of the rocking chair. few creases in there as well just to simulate the material so starting to get a bit of depth now to the artwork which is good and now I'm, I'm just checking areas as well as I finish off the rest of the design I'm constantly checking and deciding whether or not to go and add more shading so keep that in mind if you keep your artwork light you can always go darker it's very hard to go the other way you'll hear me say that quite a lot in my videos and I'll, I'll say exactly the same thing to the students you're always better to be too light we can always darken it up if you've gone too heavy and you've saturated an area it's very difficult to fix that and a lot of the time just spraying white over it that can cause you more dramas um, you know especially if it's color you can then create blue shift and all that sort of stuff so um, be careful of that especially if you you know you, you'll get your blue shift if you start spraying your white over lighter colors like um, uh, sorry darker colors not lighter colors so if you sprayed say white directly over black then you'll start to notice that blue shift coming through so whenever I do white highlights like in this particular case I don't overdo them I keep them nice and tight and that's kind of why you've got those areas of white left um, because when the white obviously sits on top of a white base there's no problem you don't get the blue shift but if you start um, going over the top or even if the overspray travels onto some of the darker shades then you are going to be prone to that so we want to try and eliminate that as much as possible and again it depends on what style of design it is sometimes the blue shift can look really good you know it can give you more of that cold appearance um, so depending on yeah what the end result should look like or what you want it to look like again if you're unsure do it on a sample and try first on a panel just to make sure that you're happy before you start you know coating your whole artwork just picking off a bit more tip drying there so obviously doing these fine areas um, you know you, you're not pulling back as much on the paint either so it doesn't tend to um, clean out any of the dried paint that may be lodged in your nozzle so you tend to get a little bit more tip drying it also depends on the humidity in the air as well and you know the temperature of the day so depending on where, you, where and you set up where you're painting will also determine how much tip drying you get and it's also the same as if the area is too cold then you can um, build up a lot more moisture in your lines and you have more blowouts and bits and pieces so keep that in mind so just adding in a bit more detail carefully rendering everything you can see we're nearly done with this tone and you can also notice now how different this artwork looks just from getting up to this step you know like we haven't even finished with the final detailing we'll do that in part two of this video um, we'll start to add the the deeper tone and the um, final highlights but even as it 
is like as you see it now you can see how much of a difference and how much more advanced the artwork looks and you really get a good understanding of the tonal values and you know whether or not you've uh, you know added your light sources in correctly so this sort of is really crucial this tone because this will be your roadmap going further forward into the design and as you continue to render you, you're going to use these um, areas that you've already darkened to further shadow them so you want to make sure that this step has been done fairly accurately. Just taking my time there to put the four X's in, which is actually a Australian beer. More common in other areas of the state as opposed to where where um, we're located, but still nonetheless popular. So rendering those boots and the sole of the boots. So not too much detail in those. The, di uh, the design is meant to appear, you know, to be still a cartoony type of design. We don't want it obviously photorealistic. You didn't want that look. So we add in as much detail as we need, but we're not going overboard. Not that much more to go with this step. Just finishing off some finer details here and there. Adding a bit more shade to the bottom underneath that rocking chair and his, um, under his boots. Some laces put in there. So you can notice that I'm still working around the design. So still moving around in different areas. Carefully uh, deepening some of my shadows before I um, move on to the next tone. So you want to establish everything as best as you can. Rendering this last boot. A couple more laces. Shading. Almost done. Adding a bit more shadow here and there. Just 
just checking over different areas and doing the same just dusting over where I want it to be darker rendering the final areas now and then we've we're all done with this tone we can move on to the next so just moving around again within that design adding more shadow here and there until I'm happy obviously you can still darken it with the next tone but I want to try and get it as accurate as possible at this stage so apart from a few more little shadows that's it for this step so hopefully you enjoyed part one of this video be sure to check out part two um, in part two we'll show you how to complete this design so thanks for watching and we will see you shortly for part two. Until next time, feel free to check out any of our other videos and thanks again for watching. We do really appreciate it. In the meantime, if you haven't already, feel free to hit subscribe. We have plenty of step-by-step -step tutorials, quick tips, airbrush insight, showcase, live streams, and much more. You can also visit our website at airbrushasylum.com.au. Thanks for watching.